Aloha everyone. This is May 31st and June 1st of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. We continue with the evacuation of Kapoho and the advancement from the lava flow from Fisher 8. The 1.30 a.m. evacuation of Kapoho and vacation land created a hectic scene on the ground. The majority of residents were still in their homes when the evacuation order was given and the majority of them, or a good amount of them, didn't know the circumstances that had been created over the last 48 hours with the flow now coming their direction. The evacuation started as civil defense and the National Guard rolled into Kapoho with sirens blaring and going over the blowhorn as well as going door to door to try and tell people to go ahead and get out now. Now think about this for a minute. What if it was you that the authorities came and told to evacuate your home in the middle of the night? and you only had maybe an hour to do so. What would you grab? What might you leave? What happens if the cat runs out while you're trying to evacuate and disappears into the bush? These are the dilemmas that the people of Kapoho were facing that morning, that night. The stress and anxiety doesn't help the situation either. Before the lava, this is what the area looked like. This is the wild pie tide pools, Kapoho vacation land. The wild Paitai pools themselves were the only coral reef on the east side of Big Island and provided some of the best snorkeling available anywhere. The sun arises on the morning of the 31st. We see just how close the lava has gotten to Kapoho. It's still roughly two miles upslope early morning on the 31st and it's continuing that march down towards the coastal community, but there's a large amount of volatility in the rate of advancement. It fluctuates moment to moment, hour to hour, but that impending doom, that sense of a disaster coming your way is now palpable. Back up slope at the eruptive vent in Leilani Estates, we see that Fisher 8 has a absolutely huge lava channel that it is feeding that is so full with lava that it's overtopping the banks of the lava channel. It's going over the tops of the levees, down the bank, and into areas that have yet to be covered with lava. This will cost more people their homes. I see a lot of reticulite Now, as a kite could just explain there, the area downwind of Fisher 8 in Leilani Estates is being absolutely covered with reticulite. And this is the rock that we looked at last time that is extremely light, extremely porous but it also cools before it hits the ground. So when these are coming down, it's not like it's raining lava, but it is like it's raining. It's raining very light rocks all day and night. It's also building this spatter cone right behind Fisher 8 on the south side of the vent rapidly. Back up at the Kilauea summit, the area continues to deflate. Holly Mau Mau itself has been now clogged with rubble that has fallen off of the walls to plug the once open conduit. Now we're going to get into something, a transition in the summit activity that's going to become more important later, but needs to be discussed now because this is basically the point where it starts. We start to see summit collapse explosions. That's what it was called at the time. And there were these collapse events where the summit would drop down sometimes multiple meters in a very quick succession. And in doing so, it would generate the force of a magnitude 5, 5.2, 5.3 earthquake. But it doesn't count as an earthquake because it's a different mechanism altogether. I want to take a minute because it's important to look at this tilt plot from the Kilauea summit. A tilt meter is a device used by geologists to measure the angle of the ground and the changes in angle. It's a very precise tool. It deals in micro radiance. If you were to take a one kilometer long board, place it on the ground, and then were to set a dime under one end of that board, that would be the equivalent to one micro radiant. It's very precise, but it's showing these collapse events. We now transition into the morning of June 1st. 
and the lava flow is within one mile of Kapoho. The evacuation that was triggered on May 31st, early in the morning, continued throughout the day, but on June 1st, that evacuation is essentially over. People are no longer being permitted access by the National Guard back into the subdivision. By the time Mick Calvert is able to perform his morning overflight, we see that the lava flow has already reached the 1960 eruption site, the crater formed in that eruption, which has since been turned into a quarry to mine cinder. But right now, lava is going to end up hitting the crater, diverting around it, back onto Highway 132, and flowing between the 1960 crater and the Kapoho crater, also known as Green Mountain. It's gonna make its way down Highway 132 till it reaches Four Corners, and then from there, it turns towards Kapoho. Here we're looking at Fisher 18, which has been approaching the Aho Anui Warm Pond, but by June 1st has essentially ceased its advancement. Back up at Leilani Estates, I just want to take a minute to look at just how wide this lava channel really is. It's hard to put a sense of scale in the video, but this lava channel at its widest point is almost 1,500 feet across. That's five football fields end to end to end just to get across the lava channel. The activity around Fisher 8 has continued to consolidate. Activity at Fisher 22 and 18 has cut off to the point where the lava flows from them are just crusting over. At Fisher 8 though, the activity is persistent and unrelenting. The lava from it is still very hot, moving down the lava channel where you still have overflows. And it's continuing to build up a spatter rampart very quickly. The views that you're seeing in these images are gonna be some of the last from the ground that we get as the barricades that have been placed in Leilani Estates are fortified and guards are posted to demand those positions. We finish off June 1st with a thermal image from USGS. This image shows how the lava flow that was moving to the north, those fingers, have started to cool compared to the rest of the lava channel as well as the flow front that's heading down towards Kapoho. That'll do it for May 31st and June 1st from the 2018 Kilauea eruption. We saw as lava continued to advance towards Kapoho and in the next episode, we're going to see lava start to enter the coastal community. Until next time, aloha.